What's good, y'all? Kyle Loftus here, and today I am sitting down with Industry Jump to introduce you all to five killer and easy techniques for more cinematic interviews. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. My tip number one is always shoot with an A and B cam. I think this is huge for interviews for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, cameras can often well, stop recording. There's issues that come up or someone might jump into frame depending on what location you're shooting at. You know, if, if it's really busy and there's a bunch of other people running around, well, that can interfere and ruin a shot. Don't wanna have that happen. So having a secondary camera to pull footage from is great. Additionally, um, you know, being able to work with two different focal lengths. So using, you know, an A cam with may maybe more of a wide look, more of an establishing setup, we get to see the environment, see where they're at, we get to know who the character is a bit more. And then we use a B cam look, you know, we use this camera look for the more emotional looks uh, for when we're cutting away uh, because our main talent is talking about maybe a very serious topic. Uh, it's something to do with suicide prevention and before it was you know more of an overtone and then all of a sudden they're getting to getting into a more personal story a personal connection they have to suicide well we're going to want to be able to punch in with our b camera to a tight look so we can really showcase that emotion and really bring that out tip number two always shoot shadow side now again this goes kind of different we're working with two different cameras here so we have an a and b cam a cam, uh, I personally like to go with a straight on look. It's just my style. And you know, again, I, I use a B cam shooting shadow side. So the reason you wanna be shooting shadow side, if you're shooting on the key light side, you're gonna be shooting towards a flat image. You're gonna be shooting towards the side of the light, which means there's gonna be zero shadow contrasts, contours, like none of that is gonna be brought out. So when you shoot on the shadow side, you're seeing that, you know, the, the ridge line from the light, you know, cutting off on, on the edge here of my face. And you're seeing the contour and the shadow and that drop off, and that's making a more um, dramatic and cinematic image. Uh, it's just gonna have more appeal. Go ahead and look, this is not just in interviews. I mean, you'll see this in general film as well, whether it's um, going back and forth between characters and dialogue, or even if it's more of uh, like an action sequence or a tracking sequence, watch what side they're shooting on. I guarantee you, you know, 90% of the time they're shooting on the shadow side. Again, it's gonna make it more dramatic, cinematic. It's gonna bring out a lot of contrast contours and help really showcase that depth. Uh, so really, really great technique for stepping up your interview game. Uh, tip number three, use a boom setup. Uh, for me, I think this is huge. Lavaliers, yes, you can use them. Yes, they are great um, tools to have in your arsenal but I think they're just so much less, uh, well, cinematic and professional. There's something about seeing a lapel on someone's shirt, especially when the wire's running on the outside. That's another thing. Please, for the sake of God, run the wire underneath the shirt if you're going to use a lapel. Um, but with that being said, I like to avoid using a lapel if at all possible, because again, I think it's just distracting. The viewer is going to see that on the talent and it just takes away from that, you know, clean, sleek and just beautiful image. And so I love using a boom mic setup. I think it's the best route to go um, when doing an interview. Again, it's just gonna allow you to have that really clean, sleek and just beautiful image. Tip and technique number four, utilize practical lights. So I have two practicals here. I have one right behind me. It's uh, actually not necessarily a practical, um, but it acts as a practical. So you're seeing uh, these different lights behind me from the LED strips. Um, right there on the wall. And so to match that, I actually have my Falcon Eyes F7 right behind my head. And so that gives the effect of another practical, like it's just part of the LED light strips, even though it isn't. And again, it then thus acts as motivating light. It simulates and acts like the LED strips. Additionally, you know, I've got a uh, Edison light bulb over here on my right hand side, your left. 
and uh, that is you know on and that is acting as a practical as well so what is the beauty of these practicals well again you know it just adds more light into the room adds more color and contrast so we're getting some red we're getting some yellows we're getting some daylight balance so we're getting a beautiful mixture of color here but also what's really good about this uh, having these practicals in here is it acts as motivating light so again this Edison bulb is acting as a motivating light source which essentially means that it's fooling the viewers eye into thinking that that is lighting the room we're seeing that light and for some reason it is fooling our minds into believing the light is wrapping around my face and lighting this whole space and room that's the beauty and that's what's so um, important about utilizing practical lights is that they act as motivating light so when you utilize practicals within your scenes it makes the viewer uh, believe that those lights are actually creating and lighting this entire scene. Whereas we know that I've got an aperture, you know, 120D over here that's really key lighting and creating, uh, you know, this scene, lighting me so I look clean and good in front of the sources here. But again, it's fooling the viewer's eye because the viewer isn't seeing that in frame, but they are seeing the practicals. And so they are acting as motivating light, fooling the viewer's eye. Um, and again, it just then makes the image seem that much more modern, clean, sleek, and again, just like a beautiful image. Tip number five, location, location, location. So I kind of changed up my general uh, YouTube vlogging setup here and created this setup. I wanted it to feel more like an interview uh, sequence, more like an interview space. But the biggest thing I have to say, uh, or one of the biggest tips, um, is location, location, location. So what I mean by that is when you're working with a talent, say if it's a doctor as compared to um, a railroad technician, as compared to a plumber, as compared to an MLB baseball player, you should not be interviewing those people all in the same space. Each and every one of these characters should have a different space and place that you are interviewing them in. And again, the environment that you're interviewing them in should be reflective of who they are as a person or occupation, etc. So a doctor, you know, if the story is relative to them and their practice, well, then we're probably going to want to go to a doctor setting. But a unique way to shoot the interview is if it's about a doctor, but the story is more about the person rather than the doctor. Well, then a great place to do it might be something more reflective of who they are as a person. So they might be a doctor, but maybe they're a huge outdoor um, advocate. You know, they love being outdoors. They love fishing. So they're a doctor, but maybe you interview them with their fishing gear out on a canoe during, you know, sunrise out on the water. Beautiful spot, beautiful interview location. I actually want to shoot something like that, like right now that sounds amazing <laughs> um, and again you know MLB play baseball player you might interview them in the dugout or the locker room again keeping those things in mind uh, when you're doing interviews and then my sixth and final tip is using a catch light so this isn't like required and sometimes and you might want to avoid this depending on how serious or dramatic you know that of an interview you're going for but I think adding a catch light can be great again the eyes that is just huge um, as a human being that's what we are drawn to we are drawn to each other's eyes that's what we're trying to connect with and, and look at first and so having that catch light in the eyes really makes the eyes well catch it's going to catch the viewers uh, attention it's going to have them kind of have a little spark and glisten and pop off the camera a bit and again it's just going to add and make for a much more clean and captivating image that's it guys those are five easy and killer techniques for more cinematic interviews thanks to industry jump for helping out and uh, teaming up with me on this project if you guys have not checked them out i highly recommend you do easily one of the best platforms for reviewing referring and hiring directors gaffer grip cinematographers etc the worst guys check them out and if you enjoyed the video please like and share with your friends and i'll see y'all next time i gotta get to work